Well, Atlantis was supposed to lift off back in July, but of course, as we all are aware, hydrogen leaks have plagued the shuttle program all summer long. Now it appears that Atlantis is ready to go. About three hours ago, the astronauts, led by Dick Covey, who was commanding this flight, it's his third flight on the space shuttle. He will be the commander for the first the time to, on this ready. flight this evening, dressing out in their orange room. flight suits and preparing to head out to the pad engine. to board the shuttle. Again, that was about three hours ago. The crew then left the operations and checkout building and uh, to the crowd gathered outside there. They uh, waved and cheered and boarded the Astro bus and headed for the five-mile ride out to launch pad 39A where the shuttle Atlantis is sitting, ready to go. If our calculations are correct, the astronauts got out to the pad about 4 o'clock, usually about 2 hours and 45 minutes after they get into the shuttle is about the time NASA likes to get them off the ground, so that would put launch uh, somewhere around 6.45 p.m. tonight. Right now, the weather, Catherine, is looking very good, much better than everyone had thought it would, uh, it would be. Uh, originally, there was about a 40% chance that they could go tonight because of winds, crosswinds at the landing site, should the shuttle have to make an emergency return here. But now, it is, weather is about no concern, about 70% chance that they can go tonight. And, of course, we will be keeping a close eye in just a few minutes at 6.30. The launch window, launch period opens. It runs from 6.30 till 10.30 p.m. tonight. We'll keep you posted. This is John Zarella reporting live from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Nine, but the last seconds. mission and conducted count. in secrecy by the Department of Defense. This is Atlanta sitting on the launch 15. pad. Less than 15 seconds now. Let's listen into the last few seconds. T minus 10, 9. We have a go for main engine start. 6, 5... Three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Atlantis and crew in the classified Department of Defense flight. Houston now controlling. Roll maneuver underway. Maneuver complete. Placing Atlantis on the proper heading. All systems performing well. Engines at 104%. Engine's throttling down now to help ease aerodynamic loads. Three engines is 72 percent. Altitude 13, 14,000 feet. Velocity 934 feet per second. Engine startling up now. Altitude 7.4 nautical miles, downrange distance 5 nautical miles. Crew given a go at throttle up. Engine's running now at 104%. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Altitude 11.3 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. Minute 45, altitude 16.9 nautical miles, downrange distance 16 nautical miles, velocity 3,600 feet per second. SRB thrust beginning to tail off, a precursor to solid staging. We have separation confirmed. Standing by for first stage performance call. So in the nighttime sky, you can see the two solid rocket boosters falling away from Atlantis as it begins its secret mission into space to deploy what is believed to be a 22,000-pound satellite 
a satellite that some are saying is destined to either photograph or listen in to, to what is going on in Iraq and Operation Desert Shield. Uh, it's the second secret satellite launch in less than a week's time. Last Monday, a Titan was launched with a secret satellite, and now Atlantis has a secret satellite in its cargo bay. CNN's John Zarella joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, John, the weather was uh, thought to be a problem earlier in the day, uh, while forecasts had been changing back and forth from 60-40 to 40-60. Uh, it appeared the weather was not a constraint. No, not at all. It was uh, absolutely uh, perfect, almost no problem at all uh, at launch time, and that's typical of the, uh, the Florida weather. And as usual, a night launch, absolutely uh, spectacular night launch here, uh, the clear skies. It, you could see it, obviously, for miles and miles. One of the interesting things usually with these secret DODs is the trajectory, the angle that the shuttle is going. And this one went just about straight up. It took forever before it actually uh, got out over the water. Usually on nominal shuttle launches, uh, they move more quickly out to the east. This one was going straight up for quite a long time. So another one of those interesting DOD uh, secret trajectories where it's going in the sky, Tom. Yeah, the 28 and a half degree uh, would indicate one type of satellite and uh, something a little uh, stronger would indicate another. So there's uh, a great deal of observation going on, uh, I'm sure not only by American scientists, but others try to determine what can't be determined. Uh, right now, uh, of course, we're going into a blackout period and we won't hear anything about the crew. That's so. exactly right. All right, so we will continue uh, to watch this mission. NASA will go into a period of radio silence. They will not report anything about the mission until landing, which is believed to occur in about four days. We, of course, will have the landing live for you here on CNN, and we will have more right after this. Yeah. For a while, it looked like weather conditions had improved, but just two minutes ago, uh, the Atlantis crew was scheduled to fire the shuttle's main engines for a deorbit burn for re-entry into the atmosphere and a landing at about 625 Eastern. But the wind shifted and then gained speed, and then the order was issued to remain in orbit for at least 24 more hours. The shuttle's four-day voyage was billed by NASA as the last secret military mission for a space shuttle. Atlantis reportedly deployed a satellite to spy on Iraq. Well, just uh, not California. Atlantis was scheduled to land at Edwards Air Force Base in California, but for the second day in a row, weather conditions got in the way. It had to land at Kennedy Space Center instead. The landing apparently went well, but as CNN's Tom Mintier reports, one big question mark remains. And touchdown. It is a question no one is willing to answer. Did the space shuttle Atlantis return to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with its spy satellite still in the cargo bay? When the shuttle lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center last Thursday, there were plenty of pictures. But eight minutes after launch, NASA lowered a veil of secrecy around the flight and maintained radio silence. But amateur astronomers around the world continued to watch the flight through their telescopes. The astronomers tracked Atlantis across the sky each day and spotted what they believed was the secret payload flying 24 seconds ahead of the shuttle on Friday. It appeared as a white dot that alternated in color from red to gold and then white again. 24 hours later, astronomers could see only the shuttle, prompting some to speculate the spy satellite malfunctioned and had to be retrieved for a trip home. John Pike, director of space policy for the Federation of American Scientists, feels there is a logical explanation for the disappearance. The satellite was boosted into a higher orbit sometime in between and thus was invisible to ground observers. Uh, that would be consistent with the satellite being a Magnum signals intelligence satellite rather than the uh, photographic reconnaissance satellite that others had suggested. A Magnum intelligence satellite would be parked in geosynchronous orbit 22,000 miles out in space. A rocket on the satellite would have been fired to boost it into orbit sometime Friday night. Before the launch, some sources claimed there was no such rocket on Atlantis to provide the boost. Well, the uh, military clearly has an interest in keeping the public slightly confused about the identity of this mission, and certainly there are some in the government who would like to portray this mission as being specifically aimed against Saddam Hussein in an effort to keep up the pressure in the Iraq crisis. Just what happened during the 80 orbits of the Earth on the Atlantis mission is being played close to the vest by both the military and NASA. The shuttle crew is military and sworn to secrecy. If anyone else knows the details of the spy satellite, they're not talking. Tom Mintier, CNN reporting.